Hello, my name is Beverly Dunkley. I'm head of the UK Chocolate Academy in Banbury. And today I'm going to teach you the easiest way to temper chocolate, which is using a microwave oven. Before I do that, I'd just like to talk to you a bit about the makeup of chocolate. And within chocolate, we've got a very special fat called cocoa butter. And when we're tempering the chocolate, we're setting the butter in a very stable crystal called beta 5. The setting temperature of that stable crystal is 34 degrees. So when you buy your chocolate, it is in fact already tempered. So when we are tempering in the microwave, all you've got to do is remember not to take this whole chocolate above 34 degrees. You'll keep the chocolate in the stable crystal that it was formed in and you'll have perfect products with a nice snap, gloss and contraction. So I'm just going to place some chocolate into a plastic bowl um, it's a good idea to do plastic. A lot of people use glass, but glass can actually retain the heat. It can heat the chocolate up when you've actually finished your tempering, and then it could take you a couple of degrees higher, which means then you've taken it out of temper. Today, I'm using the Calabar 823 chocolate, but the method we're going to do right now in the microwave, you could do exactly the same with the 811 plain chocolate or the W2 white chocolate. So I'm going to place this chocolate now in the microwave for one minute on full power. The microwave I'm using is a domestic microwave um, with a wattage of 1000. So we can see after one minute, the chocolate doesn't look like it's moved or melted at all. But if I can actually see, you can see a tiny bit of chocolate is melted at the very bottom. But if I actually pick up a button from the outer bowl, can you see? It doesn't look like it's melted, but it actually has melted. So therefore, if I continuously just put this in the microwave as it is, it's just going to heat up and get very intense in the center, and the chocolate could actually burn. So even though the chocolate looks solid, they've actually melted. So I'm now going to stir the chocolate. I saw a bit of an extra melted chocolate on the edge there, just to dissipate the heat. The chocolate is still pretty firm, so I'm going to place this in the microwave now for another short burst, about probably 10 or 15 seconds. So it's very short burst, but remember what I'm thinking all the time is I've got to melt the chocolate and not take it above this 34 degrees. So again, you can see now the chocolate is actually making more of a paste. So I'm going to place that in again for another short burst. So again, about another 10 seconds, you can see now the chocolate is getting more relaxed and we're starting to get physical melted chocolate. But then again, I've still got the chocolate's more of a paste and it needs more melting down. So when you first do the chocolate tempering in the microwave, the first couple of times you'll need to do a time test to see how long the, t the microwave takes to actually melt the chocolate below 34 degrees. Once you've got that time test, then every time in the same bowl with the same amount, it will work always at that temperature to be finished. So I'm just going to place it in now, see it's more of a smooth paste, I'm just going to put that in for another short burst. So another short burst, maybe only 5, 10 or 15 seconds and you can see now the chocolate is much more liquid and you can see we do still have some buttons that haven't totally melted. So this is a time when I wouldn't put the chocolate back in the microwave too readily. I'm just going to literally stir and melt those existing buttons in the heat of the chocolate that's already in the bowl. So after some initial stirring, if you feel that the buttons are not going to break down, then we just need to give a tiny, tiny one last short burst. So this time I'm literally a few seconds.
Now, obviously, everybody does it now and again. We are going to heat the chocolate above 34 degrees, but it's very, very easy to rectify. And all you need to do, remember, you've already got tempered chocolate, the beta crystal, in the buttons from the bag. You just add a few more buttons and stir them in gently. They'll cool down the chocolate, taking you below 34, and they'll be seeding in some more of that very precious beta 5 crystal. So I'm very happy now. My chocolate's lovely and smooth. It's a nice consistency. I've got no solid buttons in there. So my next task is to test the chocolate to make sure it sets, which give me an indication that I do have beta 5 crystal within the chocolate. So I'm just going to put um, a test of chocolate on a piece of paper, just grief or silicon. And what I'm wanting ideally is for the chocolate to set on the paper in two to three minutes. If the chocolate um, it takes longer than two to three minutes to set. It's an indication I have melted away all this very precious beta 5 crystal and that's when I need to add a bit more, stir them in to actually seed in some more crystal. So two to three minutes have passed. You can see that the chocolate is set on the paper. It's got a sheen. You're never going to get a completely high sheen just by test on the paper. That'll be if you're using a polycarbonate mould for uh, novelty figures or doing acetate for decoration. But we're happy, there's no lines there. If there were a few lines, then the chocolate will probably be a little bit hot. So you just let it cool for a few minutes and then it'll be perfect if you do an additional test. If the chocolate hasn't set after two to three minutes, then you will need to add some additional tempered buttons. Just stir them into your main mass of chocolate, allow them to cool down the chocolate and to seed in some beta 5 crystals. So we're happy now and we can make some nice products for the bakery.